Hi everyone, my name is Doug Black. I'm the founder of Triple Nerd Score, a web agency, and I'm very excited, I'm crazy excited to be with you all today at EEConf 2020. Uh, with all the craziness going on around us, it's just great to be able to get together and, and talk about a framework we love. And today we're gonna be talking about the mystery in the models. We're going to be talking about really what are models in Expression Engine, how do we add them to our add-ons, how do we really make use of them in you know, our day to day. Uh, before we go much further, let me do the obligatory who I am screen. I am a current Pittsburgher, uh, right in Pennsylvania. I lead Triple Nerd Score, a web agency. I build an EE, I love Expression Engine. Uh, it's really one of the reasons I get to uh, do any of what I get to do today. Um, I have a wife and two beautiful baby girls. I drink more coffee than I should, and I am just happy to be here to serve uh, today. So I am uh, often on the EE uh, Slack, so you can feel free to reach out to me there or drop me an email, drop me a line, drop me a tweet. Uh, whatever it is, I'm just here to help. So let's talk about models for a second. Models and Expression Engine drove me insane. As I would look at the documentation, and I'd try and look and say, I know that this is something I should do, but why and what and how? And even sometimes reading through the documentation can be a little bit confusing. I had used, you know, I needed the Garabit channel entry for an add-on. You know, I can kind of see how that's done in some other add-ons, but not totally understanding the concept. And so I really took a deep dive into models in Expression Engine, um, had done some actual like core PRs for uh, some of the changes that are coming up in models as well, and really come to understand uh, just exactly what they're supposed to do and how we're supposed to be using them. So let's get started here. What are models and what do they do? In a nutshell, models manage data, plain and simple. A model is a class that represents some sort of logical structure and associated database table. It makes the, the crud happen, the create, the read, the update, the, the delete, back and forth to be able to say to your database, here's the information I need, or here's the information I want to you know, connect you to, Here's something I need to connect to this channel entry or to this member, and this is how we do it, all through this model. EE already has a number of models that it's using all throughout. You know, you've probably seen, if you're only used to working in like template code, you know, you've seen the, the X channel entries um, tag that we use in order to get entries from the database. That uses the channel entry model in order to call that out. And so let's actually take a look at, at the way that EE uses some models. This will help us to start to understand really what a model is and really how we're supposed to be using them uh, by taking a look at the actual core of the code. So for example, if we wanted to create an entry, this is the code from the controller. When you hit that save button on that channel entry, this is the code that gets called. Uh, you can see around line 182 here that the entry is using EE model make channel entry. So all that's doing is grabbing that channel entry model and it's saying, I need a new one. Let's start this thing. And you can see it sets a number of different variables there. Eventually it'll go down to save. If I wanted to read a member, this is the anonymize function. Uh, when you're actually looking at a member in the member setting um, and you hit that anonymize button, this is what gets called. It looks for that member ID. And then if you look at line 1356 there, it starts by saying EE model get member and member is our model. That's what we're looking for. It uses the model service to grab the member model and it's filtering off the member ID that gets sent into it. And that little first there says, I only want that one. Um, and you can also see a couple more that are in there, but that's ultimately where it starts. Not only is it reading a member, let's look at another one. So this is a fun one, getting a file and filtering that on a relationship. So this is where the, some of the complexities start to come within models. So if I wanted to grab a file, I would, if you look at line 32 here, this says EE model, so it's using the model service to get the file model, and then with upload destination. And that upload destination is a relationship based on that model to be able to say every file has to have a place where you're storing it. And so I want to grab not only that file there, but I also want to grab the upload destination. 
And if you look at line 34, you can actually see that we're um, filtering on the relationships data and then also filtering on the site ID. So not only are we looking for a model, but models are so robust that we're able to say, I don't just want a file. I want a file that exists in this upload destination over here. It would be the same thing like, I want to make sure I find a template that's part of this template group only and, and filtering on that template group. Or I want to find a member that's in this member group. I want to find a channel entry that has this status. That's one of the great parts about models is you can filter and you can you know manipulate and all sorts of things. And we're actually going to take a look today at how to add a model to an existing expression engine add-on. We're actually going to do this by helping our friends who are at a company called Entertainment 720. Any Parks and Rec fans, you know what I'm talking about. Our friends at Enter Entertainment 720 are hemorrhaging money. So they came up with this idea that on their awesome blog, they're going to add an upvote and a downvote. So we're going to actually create that vote model. Rather than manipulating the database directly, we're going to create that model, and we're going to build that right into their templates. So with all of that, let's build. So the very first step that we're going to do in creating our model is to create our data structure. This is how we define our database table. We want to make sure we know how our model is communicating with the database, as well as what data is going in and out. So for our example today, we're going to create a model called vote. And we're going to create a table uh, called uh, upvote downvote, which is the name of our module, underscore votes. The table can really be anything, but you know I'm always a fan of following a, a good naming schema. We're going to add four columns to our model. First, we're going to add our ID, which will act as our primary key in the database. Uh, for our purposes, we're probably not going to use that so much um, because we'll be querying off of the entry ID. But if you're creating a model, uh, let's say you're creating like a form module and you had a form response mo uh, model that you wanted to use, you would then query against that ID, which is the primary key to say, hey, I want to just see this one response and be able to bring that in. We're going to add our entry ID, which is going to be our associated entry. We want to define that relationship right up front. And then we're going to add our upvotes and downvotes, which are our simple unsigned integer columns, basically just to do the counting for us. So let's take a look at what that looks like inside the code. Um, so Expression Engine, when you create a model, doesn't naturally create the database table that you need. So you actually need to define this. Um, and we're going to define it in the module uh, update file in our install function here. So you can see here, I have, uh, I'm loading dbforge, which is what Expression Engine uses to uh, manipulate the database outside of the regular db object. Uh, it's really important that you use that. Uh, to create your table. And then I am creating my module. I'm actually adding an action here, uh, which we'll use later. But then I'm going to create my columns here in my table. And all I'm doing here is I'm going to check if the table exists. And then we create my arrays of each of these fields. So with my ID, which is an integer, auto increment because it's our primary key. Uh, which I add that key down here. And then adding each of our columns and creating our table. And so that's basically the database creation process. So the next thing we need to do is initiate our model. We need to make sure that Expression Engine registers the model when it's booting up the whole of the framework. When Expression Engine boots add-ons, it does so by looking at the addon.setup file, which if you've ever created uh, any sort of plugin, field type, whatever, you've seen this file before. So we add the model in here. We register it by first creating it, um, which is right over, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So if you can kind of see, I know it may be a little small. But inside my upvote, downvote folder, I have a folder called models and a vote. Uh, file, which we'll use for a model in a second. So as I'm creating that, uh, I have my namespace here, which is upvote, downvote. And all I'm going to do is add in the models array key here, which tells Expression Engine as it's booting the add-on 
to uh, bring in whatever models you define here. Uh, and so I define my model, my vote model, and I tell it to look for this class. You're going to look for models slash vote. So, and that's really all it takes to initialize it. Uh, there are a couple other variables that we can use inside of the addon.setup, and we'll show you those a little bit later on. So now comes the fun part of actually creating our model. We're going to show you uh, basically step by step what it takes to build out a model. And so let's look at our code. So here I have kind of my blank little scaffold file for my vote model. Uh, as you can see up top here, I have my upvote, downvote, which is my namespace as defined in the add-on setup right here, slash models. And that tells me that I want to make sure that I'm looking for this namespace and then this, whoops, and then this class here. So, uh, and then I call my class my vote. And the only thing that we need to make sure is that we're extending the uh, expression engine base model here. So, and then there are a few things that need to happen in every single model that we create. So the first here is that we add a primary key uh, and that we define that in the model. So we saw in our data structure that we're going to define that as ID. So this is what we do here is we define our primary key. The next is we define which table we're going to look at. And we define that in the updating process, uh, in the install process, excuse me. And uh, we're calling that our upvote, downvote, underscore votes table. And that way, when Expression Engine is doing all of its magic behind the scenes of creating and reading your entries, that it automatically knows what to look for and how to look for it. So now the next thing we have to remember in our data structure, we defined four separate uh, columns that we're doing. And we need to define those as protected uh, variables of the model class that we're building out. So we have our ID that we defined, our entry ID, our upvotes, and our downvotes. Oh, and that's more fun for later. And this, in a nutshell, is how we define a model. At this point, uh, in our module or in anywhere else in Expression Engine, that we wanted to call this model, we it would have all of the same benefits of even the channel entry model, where we could just say, ee, grab the model service, and then get vote, filter by entry ID, and we have all of that information right at our fingertips. So the one thing we haven't done so far is actually make any use of our model. And our clients are curious. They want to know why the Entertainment 720 blog hasn't had its upvotes and downvotes just yet. <clears throat> so let's go about and let's add these to the actual module, the upvote, downvote module. Um, you can take a look at our site here. Uh, 720 uh, has a blog, and if we look here, it would be nice to add, a, you know, a level of the upvotes and the downvotes that are coming in. We can also take a look at the individual blogs themselves. We can see, you know, this one, it's all about the cones. Uh, we have just a whole bunch of content. Right down at the bottom, we want to be able to cast votes to be able to say, yes, I love this content, or I don't want to see any more of it. So let's jump back into our code base here. And I have a lot of this already written out um, more for time's sake. All of this code will be available to you on GitHub so you can download it, you can take a look at it, piece it apart, build it out to your own uh, specs, whatever you would need. But we're gonna primarily take a look at two functions in order to make it cruddy. We wanna be able to create, read, update, and delete. So we have our two functions here. First, we're going to look at our votes function. We use our votes function in this case to be able to grab the votes associated with an entry ID. So if you take a look, starting at line 59 here, we're going to take a look specifically at how we use our model in two places. First, we're creating our entry ID here, uh, or we're grabbing our entry ID from uh, the template that was called. And then here, we're actually going to try and read our own model. So we have our votes, and we call the EE model service. And we get, and you can tell the different uh, name for our particular model. It's upvote, downvote, colon, vote. In the case when you're creating a model, um, EE automatically appends EE to any models that exist in the core of it. If you're creating one, you need to make sure that you're adding your module name in there. So for our case, it's called upvote, downvote, just like our module is called. And then we uh, do upvote, downvote, colon, vote. We want to filter off of the entry ID. 
and then we want to call first. And that's how we get all of the votes associated with uh, our particular uh, entry that we're calling. So now in the case that a good content is new and we haven't created that, uh, that voting system already for it, we want to say, well, if we didn't find any votes, let's make one now. And so these lines right here, this is exactly how we would go about creating something in the database via our model. So uh, we see we're calling the E model service again on line 72. And then we're going to make our model name. And then we're going to feed it the values that we want to make. So we're going to give it the entry ID that we called in. And we're just going to set all the votes to zero since it's the first time this was called. If we wanted to, in the case that we didn't want to use our default values, get rid of those for a second. So we're just going to call EE votes. We're going to say, we can do this uh, the same way with all of the protected variables that we uh, signed on the class. So I could say my entry ID equals entry ID and votes. Oops, votes. That would help. Upvotes equals zero. Votes down votes equals zero. Both are along the same lines. If you don't have default data coming in, then you know you can do it this way. So for our case here, let me back up. As, so after we do that, all we do is save. And it saves it automatically to our database table. It associates it with that entry ID. Uh, down here at the bottom of the function, you can see that we're just going to do the template uh, manufacturing. And then in our blog post, no, that's our blog post. Let's take a look at our home page here. So I've got these little lines of code here to call our module. Uh, X un, up vote down vote and they're calling our votes function and then we're just going to feed it the entry ID that we're getting in this channel entries loop right up here so we get our variables and so I'm going to save that make sure this is all saved and then let's take a look at our home page here so I scroll down and you can see now we have those votes uh, that are being displayed there we got our thumbs up and thumbs down uh, so somebody can be able to look and say, whoa, that Let's Go blog, it's got 17 votes up. Let's take a look. So now that's great if we want to just display it. But let's say, for example, too, that we also want to do the upvoting and downvoting portion. So um, let's take a look at our cast vote function, which is here. And this is going to do a lot of the same kind of functionality. Um, we're going to do this, at least in this code, via an AJAX call. Um, via JavaScript so that it can happen real time. Um, but behind the scenes, the model entry is all happening just about the same way. We're looking for an entry ID and what kind of vote. We're going to call the model here. Uh, if it doesn't exist, we're going to again create it. And then this time, instead of creating it and saving it, uh, we actually need to set the votes. So here we're saying if type people's up, we're going to increase the up votes. If type people's down, we're going to increase the down votes. And then we're going to save. And so this is how we actually update the, the models. We call it, uh, in our case, we call it or create it. And then we just assign the variables and we save it. And she's all good. So we're going to send this back out as an AJAX response. Uh, so we take a look at our blog template. I'm going to uncomment all of this code here. Uh, and there's a lot happening here. So again, feel free to download the code and take a look. But the gist is this. So I'm going to here uh, call our upvote downvote votes. So because I want to be able to see the votes that are happening on the content. Uh, feed it in the entry ID. And then here on these clicks, uh, I've got some uh, JavaScript that's basically going to say, I want you just to throw the uh, throw the upvotes here. So if, it, if they haven't already voted, then uh, we're going to run the upvote function. So, and that's where that action ID was happening in the upvotes. Uh, I'm sorry, in the update file. Uh, we have that action where we can basically say, I want the action ID. We save it in the JavaScript and all that. But for our model's sake, all we're going to do there is call that votes function. And then we're going to get the action URL for our cast votes um, function inside the module. So when I do that and I go back to my blog here, oops, let's refresh. 
and let's scroll down. Now I have my content that I want to be able to upvote or downvote. As I click on it, you can see it automatically does the math. And now just to show you on the front page too what that looks like, that was it's all about the cones. So right here, let's refresh. And we can see that our vote saved uh, because it gets called on the front end. So we can do this. I added some JavaScript so that no one can be naughty and you know voted a million times. So I'm just going to refresh a couple times. Oh, let's do one more. There we go. Because this is some solid content here. We'll refresh. Oops, and scroll up. And there's our votes. And they are officially saving on our content. So we've only scratched the surface of what models and expression engine can actually do. If you take a look at the documentation, there are a load of things that you can add to your model. Some examples might be relationships. So if you want to take a look at this, I have this built into the upvote downvote plugin uh, module, excuse me, here. So you can see we define our relationship. Uh, we've already said that we have our entry ID on our table, but if we want to formally define that, we define that in the model by saying that we have a, a channel entry relationship, a channel entry has one vote because we're, we're not sharing those back and forth. Uh, and we're sharing that on the channel entry um, model. And then if we wanted to find the inverse because the channel entry would have one vote and a vote would belong to channel entry, we define that in the inverse here. So we can see that in action uh, in our top votes function here in the module by saying we want to call the EE model service to get our vote model we want to get it with the ch the associated channel entry, and then we want to filter on that channel entry channel ID. So, like if I only want the top votes for the blog channel, I create you know create content you know that looks a uh, little bit something like this, where all of our blogs are organized by the amount of upvotes that the content received. So I get to order there. Uh, but that's an example of a relationship in action. There are other things that you can do, such as an event. Let's say that whenever your model is saved, you want to um, update another model or send a notification, that kind of thing. Uh, you can add that into an event. There is model validation, so that if you want to make sure that what's being entered into your model is appropriate data and the type of data that you want to save there, uh, Expression Engine has a load of validation models right out of the box that you can just write into into your own model. If you wanted to add metadata, um, you know, to see whether or not your model was updated, that kind of thing, you can add many to many relationships. So for example, if you wanted to create like a tagging module, you know, a channel entry wouldn't just may not have just one tag and multiple entries may be tagged with the same one. So you want to create a many to many relationship by having a pivot table that you've defined. And so you can actually create that many to many back and forth and uh, Expression Engine will sync those back and forth as you've done that. There's also uh, the collection um, object which is involved in models as well, which is so easy to kind of use to manipulate your data, you know, to send it out in the proper way. We can see this a little bit here as we're calling this um, a relationship field here in our top votes module. I'm sorry, top votes function, where we're saying we want to order that by the amount of upvotes. You know, that's something that exists on the collection there. So there is absolutely a load that you can do inside of your models. Included on these slides uh, are a list of the appropriate documentation that you would use for both the model service itself, and there are a couple pages in there. Um, as well as the Code Igniter database forge, um, since Expression Engine is built on, on CI, um, for how do you build your database tables, that kind of thing. Uh, I also include uh, code for this specific website. So for the entire Entertainment 720 site, including the database, you can download it and get that installed pretty quick. Take a look at how the specific um, module is interacting with the data. And you can also download just the module itself. So I hope 
that this demystified some of what exists in expression engine models. And I am looking forward to hearing from you. Any way I can serve you answering questions, uh, let's go and let's keep building. All right, Doug, that was an awesome talk. Thanks so much for uh, putting that together. I'm just really thrilled that that's also recorded and um, you know it's gonna be out there because I think it's such valuable information, especially for um, people that are learning how to do stuff in EE. So oh, we wanna open you. this up um, to, let me go check the questions. Does anybody have any questions for Doug? Feel free to ask anything. I won't pretend to know all the answers either, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you didn't get a chance, all of the links to uh, both the slides and the code base are pinned up at the uh, the top of the chat here, um, and so the full site is able to be downloaded, and you can download just the add-on itself if you want to kind of pull it apart and see, um, you know, especially some of that relationship stuff at the end. It's uh, there's a lot that you could do, you know, another 40 minutes just on relationships themselves. So all of that's there. That's a great idea to do another 40 minutes for uh, on relationships and stuff, Doug. <laughs> we'll look forward to that, con that content <laughs> the next time we do one of these. <laughs> um, anybody, anybody have any questions? We're trying to look at the chat. I know there's a little bit of a um, a little bit of a delay as well. Um, we are posting feedback links as well. Um, I'll get that in here so you can you guys can all um, let Doug know what a great uh, job he did, as well as um, anybody anybody that you saw um, yesterday too. Let's see here. All right, here we go. Um, here's one from Sheldon. What? Uh, why store the votes data in a separate DB instead of the entry itself? Mm, great question. So, really, for for this case, you know, kind of following the idea of separation of concerns, um, you know, wanting to make sure that our vote model is kind of separate from the entry because it's not actually an entry itself, and we don't necessarily want to put it on a field because you know then you know, a person who has content editing permissions could go in there and, you know, give themselves a million upvotes. And so we kind of want that to be fully separate from the ent uh, from the entry itself um, as kind of its own thing. Um, not necessarily saying you couldn't store it on the entry itself, um, but then, you you know, you could create fields and, and do that kind of, th or just create fields on the channel itself. But again, for the idea of separation of concerns, just making sure that it's it's totally separate. It's by itself. It can't be touched necessarily on the entry. It's not part of the content. It's something that modifies the content and is related to it. So that was really the reasoning behind that. Okay, awesome. We have a, a another great question here from Yuri. Can you give some insights on when to use models and when not to use them? Ooh, yes. So. I like to use models when specifically when you're addressing one one object that kind of falls outside of the general scape of EE. Um, or I mean, even if you're using, you know, like a channel entry, that kind of thing. But if I'm creating a model, it's specifically something that doesn't necessarily exist in EE. Um, you know, so I would say best to use them, you know, when you're when you're kind of looking for something that doesn't necessarily exist within the EE core itself, you know, so you're not creating like an alternate channel entry, you can just use channel entries. Um, and then specifically using something that you're going to be, you know, addressing back and forth that, that needs some sort of data management, data structure to it, I think would be really important. Um, when not to use it, you know, if you're updating, if you're up dating fields and um that kind of thing on the channel entry then just use the just use what already exists um i think that's probably the best way to go okay awesome that's great um and gavin asked could, uh, could you give some more pointers as to where to find out more about the built-in models defined in ee <laughs> um 
one of the best ways to to find that is to actually there are two places actually now I think about it. So one, if you look in the um, the model service documentation, um, which is in the the helpful links I posted there, um, you can take a look at it. It gives you some of the models that already exist, um, but there aren't. I don't think there's a place in the documentation that gives you like the full list of what's in there. One of the best places to look is to dig into the actual core itself and see how some of these things are being called. Um, you know, I gave some examples on the the member and the channel entries, um, you know, but there are models all over places like statuses and, you know, template groups, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you're looking for how those are, are really called and, and really pulled into play, that would be a good place to start. Okay, awesome. We have another one from uh, Matt Randalls, and it's uh, less model related, but he noticed that you were linking to the Code Igniter three docs. Um, will EE6 uh, and and EE6 Plus be looking be looking to stay with Code Igniter or migrate away? Just wondering now. Code Igniter four is out. Would you say the model knowledge and updates uh, there would apply to EE still in the future? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't fully know the answer to that. Um, uh, so I think I, I've seen the EE6 uh, code. And so I know like it still pretty much follows the same the same standards of what's been in there for a little bit. Um, though we are making some improvements on the model. I know, you know, one of the big changes that's coming in in both 6 and 5.4 um, is the model speed. You know, that's always been a complaint, especially if you're using cart throb and somebody has a cart full of 10 items, you know, it takes 10 minutes to go through, you know, that entire checkout process. Um, so there are going to be some improvements to the speed in there, as well as some changes to the collections and all that. But it's still going to pretty much rely on the same uh, model setup. Okay. All right, great. Anybody else have some more questions? I think they're kind of... TJ's dropping some knowledge. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, thanks so much. Um, I, I think, uh, Doug, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but if you want to go into one of the session lounges after this, people who have questions could meet up with you there. Maybe I'm just going to say lounge one because I wasn't specific enough <laughs> yesterday. So um, if is, is that okay, Doug? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll go hang out in lounge one for for a little bit. If anyone has any other questions or want to discuss anything, oh. um, you know, drop like there codes. Are actually, there are just a couple. I'm going to send you to lounge one in just a sec, but there are a couple that are coming in, and then cool. I'll and then I'll send you to lounge one. Um, let's see here. Oh, is the documentation for Code Igniter worthwhile reading? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that one. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I mean, there, there's better books out there, I would say, you know, um, that kind of thing. The reason I, inc I included the Code Igniter um, documentation in there is because DBForge uh, comes directly from that Code Igniter. And so if you're creating your database tables, that's where you're able to find out all of the parameters for creating, you know, especially more complex columns. Like if you've got, you know, an unsigned nullable integer, um, that kind of thing, like being able to know those parameters when you're creating database tables, you can all get it there. So in that case, I would definitely say it's worthwhile reading. Okay. Awesome. Okay, and there are a couple questions about links and the repo. And what I'm going to do is I'll I'll let you handle that. Maybe maybe you could tweet it out or something. Uh, tweet those out. I'll I'll get those over to you. And um, we can I think we can go ahead and wrap this up and send everybody over to the lounge. Thank you so much, Doug. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity today. And again, and all of the links are available at uh, triplenerdscore.net slash eeconf. And I'll see you all in uh, lounge one. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right, bye, all.